All right, so the workflow settings were defined on each of the modules. So what I'll start by doing is I'll go into our procurement and sourcing module. And a lot of it, this looks familiar for many of you, and all of the different modules that has the workflow has this workflow setup area here that allows for you to go in and set up those different kinds of workflows. I'm going to go ahead in here and give you a look here. So this is the list of those workflows that's been created right now. Out of the box, there's a lot of different workflow templates that actually will be associated to whatever triggers that you're using or whatever process that you're applying into AX. When you're in the different modules, for example, here in procurement and sourcing, the only templates or workflow templates that you're allowed to create in here, obviously, with regards to the procurement and sourcing, so it means there are some logic and code happening in the background that will trigger some of these events within the workflow. That being said, it's also possible to create new workflow, however, they create some workflow templates, it does require slight modifications. If you have any requirements of creating workflows in areas where they don't come out of the box. So there's quite a few workflow templates already available, but you never know what you're going to need. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of the ones that we just have here. What is shown here is that you can have different versions within the workflow. So you can have one active version, but you can have different edits of the same workflow. You can also create a new workflow from scratch. Within each of the different types of workflow templates, you're only allowed to have one active, obviously, so the system will know which one to get. So what I'll show you here is I'm going to open this up. Now, one of the differences here on the new AX compared to AX 2012 is that this will now, since it's all web-enabled on the web, it will now open up a new screen and ask me to log in once more. On AX 2012, it's with the application itself. So we'll show you a little bit about the settings here. All right. Popped up on my other screen here. This is our purchase requisition review. And this is the template that allows for you to set up the process flow that you would like to do. So an end and you also have these different controls out here that you can use and where you can actually move them in and do a drag and drop and add it to it. And you can then set them up and set up the specific properties and, and decisions that you want to set in and get that going. One of the nice things around here is that online it brings you information down here to give you the warnings. This is how you can validate your module. To validate your template here. It shows you what you need to get done in order for this to be a valid workflow. Within each of the workflow, you have some possibilities. Let me just cross this out so we don't have that issue here again. So I'm just going to delete it again. Okay. So within the workflow here, you have a general workflow settings that you can set up for the properties and so on. So if you look into the basic settings here, let's see it jumps over to another screen again. You see that we can see who are the owner. Are we going to use any email template? We could use an email template for this one if you want to send it out by an email. And you can have your submission instructions as well. So that means said that if you have a workflow that you would like to send out, let's say, to one of your vendors for them to approve a purchase order or whatnot, you can put that in here, and then you can use this what's called insert placeholders. It can give you some more dynamic placeholders to put in the body on the email or on the submission instructions. So you can put in like specific information for that exact workflow instance, which could be a PO number or the requester or whoever it be. I mean, there are some different, yes, you see here, there are some different selections here that allows for you to put that in. So a very neat tool that allows for you to do that here. And then on the activation piece here, this is where you can set the conditions for when we want to see when this purchase requisition needs to be active. So coming back to my comment before, where you said where you had different versions of, of workflows, you can have different workflow templates running on purchase requisition that has a different process, but it has to be specified when it's going to be active. So you can have different conditions of when it's actually going to be triggered within the system. This is where you can set up these conditions for that. And then also there is a notification page here that actually can send out notifications and it's merely a notification that tells another person how this workflow has been initiated or this workflow has been completed. It 
doesn't ask the recipient to do any actions or anything whatsoever. And then there are notes here to see um, what happened. This is more of a version history, notes for the version for setting this up. Going into the actual workflow itself, each and every of these boxes here also have our basic settings or automatic actions. And so as you can see, as I highlight the different fields in here, you'll see how the view up here changes. So if you look at this one, for example, the basic settings here. This one is a stickless as an example. I'm sorry about that. Let's see if I can get this going. So this is a, a decision box, kind of if, when you, if you think into visual world, you see you have this decision making box. So this asks you, okay, for which condition, when it's true, which direction do we go in this process? So, so this tells me that when you create a purchase requisition and you create a purchase requisition line and you put in a vendor account and you put in a line right now and you put in the vendor to, to be 1001, what it's going to do then is going to go in and it's going to take a sub workflow or a line item request, which means that you will now go down to a more granular level and you have to do approval on the line level compared to the other two weather labels that if it's a different vendor or if it's a no, if you don't have a vendor on your purchase requisition, it will go directly to this step where it will be an approval step. So that's one of the ways that you can control these things here. The next one I want to show you, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you have different controls that you can put in, and you also have your approvals and tasks that we use that. For example, this one is, of course, the most important one. This is the approval section, and this is why we have these different types of workload templates, because once, for example, on the purchase requisition workflow, once it's approved, you will continue to the next step. So for example, if it's not approved, you can't convert the requisition into a purchase order. You cannot approve the purchase requisition if the workflow item is not approved. And some of those actions and, and things are predefined within each and every one of these workflow templates. So I just want to open up this one real quick and show you guys what kind of different things that can happen here. So as you see here, there are some automatic actions and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show basic settings and whichever one I select up here under the modify element is going to open up this window and you're going to have all of those four different settings where you can change the settings. So for example, basic settings and then you have automatic actions here and automatic action is that you can make the system, depending on some conditions, you can have the system automatically approve or do something for you. So if I click enable here, then this opens up again for these conditions as well, which are for um, when this automatic action has to happen. Now let me just see if I can make this a little better view. There we go. So when we go in and we add a condition here, we can say anything, we'll look into the conditions and say, okay, what condition, and then I can show, okay, see if I can find anything that would make and as you see, what it actually looks into, it looks into all of the fields that are available on the purchase requisition header, anything on the worker, or anything on the purchase requisition line. So you could, I know this is a bad example, but you could set in and say, okay, every time this condition is met, then we need to have this automatic action will happen. One thing we can see if we can find, it can find any amount, item number, items, let's see, uh, line amount. Do we have an amount here? Okay, so every time the net amount is smaller than, say, 100, for example. And you can also define it by currency here. So I'm going to put in US dollars here. Okay, I'm going to click on here. Then every time this condition is true, then we want to autocomplete this action. And then you can see, okay, what are we allowed to do? We can approve or we can reject. So I'm going to go ahead and say approve, meaning that every time we create a purchase requisition with a line that is less than 100, that means that it will automatically be approved. So it will automatically approve and not even kick off the workflow process at all. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one here. Those are the automatic actions. And then we have notifications and advanced settings as well. The notifications is what we mentioned just before. It's just to give you a note out to other interest parties who uh, whether they want to get an information on, on what happened. And then the advanced setting is that you can set up a final approver if it's a more important workflow. And you can also set up a time limit.
And the time limit on this one is what are the duration? So what's going to happen if you set up a time limit? So the meaning that if nobody has taken any action on this one, has done any updates on this workflow within say one day, for example, what's going to happen? Are we going to reject it or approve it? Then it then the workflow will automatically or the batch job will automatically approve or reject the workflow here. So that can be set up as well. The last part here is which of these actions should allow for this workflow means. So you can approve it, you can reject it, you can request a change, or you can delegate it to a different person. If you do one of those things, that's the abilities that you get within the actual workflow when you handle the workflow in the system. Another thing is that going back to the automatic actions and also the automatic action here, what you will notice is that you only have two availabilities here and you have four down here. And it makes sense because the request to change and a delegate needs a more manual process because it's not enough just to say, hey, I want to delegate this task on my process, on my workflow process. I also need to point out which persons I need to delegate it to. Obviously, the system cannot do that for you. So that is one of the things here. I believe that there are some possibilities so if you set up an organization, you can set up a hierarchy where you can actually have it to automatically send the workflow for a second approver or for a, another approver if it's not met within the time limit. Also, that can be used in terms of, uh, of, of what I will come back to in a little bit. All right. So that's the setting here that gives you all the about you and you can, as I said, drag and drop and get them set up and you'll have this errors and warnings section down here that will give you a real-time validation of your workflow, whether it's good or not, and, and how it goes.